Well, as Bob Iger has stated repeatedly that he is obsessed with finding his replacement for the next CEO of Disney, we aren't too far removed from the former uh, replacement for Bob Iger that was CEO. That was a very short-lived tenure that was very tumultuous and I would say pretty dramatic in the way that things turned out there where Bob Iger returned and uh, basically Bob Chapek was pushed to the side very unceremoniously. And during that period of time, I figured this would eventually happen, but now we have a lot of stories coming out about how all this unfolded. And uh, we have an article here from New York Times that talks about this. And so I figured let's read through part of this because this is a very long article. We're not gonna read this whole thing here, but there are some tidbits in here that are very interesting. And uh, it's something that when they're looking for the next CEO, uh, you have to wonder if this same process is playing out yet again or if Bob Iger is doing things different this go round. So we're going to read through this and get some thoughts on it. So hi, I'm Jared of Capture the Magic. And the article from the New York Times is the palace coup at the Magic Kingdom. And funny enough, New York Times, they've had an article, a couple articles really being pretty critical of Disney. So you're again, you're seeing a lot of these major publications really kind of come out here and start saying things that they weren't saying just a few years ago. But uh, like I said, this is a very, very long article. We are not going to read this whole thing. But there is a little bit the interesting parts here over on WDWNT where they kind of talk about the the gist of some of that stuff they had said there. And basically the, the main takeaway here is Bob Chapek says his children and grandchildren being a, quote, Disney family stopped him from suing the company. Uh, so they talk about the New York Times released a detailed report outlining the power struggle between Bob Chapek and Bob Iger as Chapek attempted to take over as CEO of Walt Disney Company in 2020. Uh, by speaking with scores of people involved with the tumultuous time at the Disney Company between Bob Chapek's rise as CEO in 2020, his firing in 2022, the New York Times has provided a detailed report of the power struggle between Chapek and Iger during one of the most difficult periods of time in the company's history. The transition from Iger to Chapek as CEO of the Walt Disney Company was anything but smooth to those on the inside. It looked as though Iger didn't truly want to relinquish his power over the company, despite wanting to officially step down as CEO. While Chapek felt that he had the support of Iger in many ways, it was clear when he became CEO that the two were not seeing eye to eye on many things. Uh, that included what Chapek would be in charge of. One of the first matters to drive a wedge between the men was that Chapek wasn't named to the board of directors. It was an unusual decision as almost all chief executives serve as board members. Additionally, Iger stayed on as executive chairman and ch cr chief creative officer. Because of this, Chapek was forced to answer to both Iger and the board. So basically, they go into the article and they do talk about how Iger wanted Chapek to answer to him. So he was okay with, and they basically came to a compromise because the board said, well, the CEO is supposed to answer to the board. Well, they then said, okay, fine. He can answer to you and the board. And Iger was okay with that because he just wanted Chapek to answer to him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're talking about CEO power trips here. Like, okay, like why step down? I, that's the thing. Like, obviously, Iger never left. He was always in charge on some level. Like, I, it just, it it's one of those things that's just so weird. Despite the strange circumstances, Chapek accepted the terms. In an initial meeting between him and Susan Arnold, who had served as the chairman Chairwoman of the Walt Disney Company since uh, December 31st, 2021, Chapek was issued a warning. Give him a wide berth. Don't step on his toes, she told Chapek as uh, talking about dealing with Bob Iger. Uh, it says, after Chapek took over as CEO on February 25th, 2020, Iger continued to make huge decisions for the company. When the COVID-19 pandemic impacted Disney parks, California Governor Newsom called Iger to discuss keeping the parks open. He called Iger, not Chapek. That's a very interesting takeaway from that. Um, Iger told him that the parks should close for safety reasons. While Chapek agreed with the decision, he was given no input in the matter. So technically, Bob Chapek was the CEO of Disney whenever this decision was being made about shutting down the parks in California. So Newsom calls Iger. Iger then basically uh, convinces Newsom to shut down the parks because Newsom wasn't going to do it. So the parks closing down, you can the, the cascading effect from that, you can basically blame on Bob Iger. Uh, but it's wild that Bob Chapek never had a say. And then it says he agreed with the decision, but was never consulted. That is insane. So if I'm at that point, if I was Bob Chapek, I would have just walked away. But obviously, that's a lot of money, and he's probably whatever. But um, it's obvious at that point that Bob Chapek's not in charge. I mean, it, it, you know, again, CEO, technically he's CEO, but Bob Iger, he answers to Bob Iger, Aero, Bob Iger's still the boss. 
Shortly thereafter, Chebeck and Chief Financial Officer Kirstie McCarthy decided to furlough 90,000 employees at the theme parks, but Iger insisted they wait until the CARES Act was signed into law. When Iger's decision won out, Chebeck's wife referred to Chebeck as Iger's lapdog. It's one way to put it, and I think I would agree. When New York Times media columnist Ben Smith released a column detailing a conversation he'd had with Iger in which Chapek was shown in a negative light, Chapek was furious. Arnold was taken aback by Chapek's reaction to the article and urged him to calm down and defer to Iger. She felt he was being paranoid that Iger was trying to destroy him. To show support for Chapek, the board finally named Chapek a director. I mean, I don't think that's overreacting when you have your former... I guess the guy that used to be in charge is constantly taking shots at you in the media and in private. I mean, essentially what was set up in this article, the article, again, is very long. It goes into a lot of stuff about the internal stuff. But essentially what was going on is there were people that were loyal to Iger inside the company. So anytime Chapek did something they didn't like, they would run and tattle on Chapek to Bob Iger. And Iger would either do something internally or he would make comments to the media undercutting Bob Chapek. So, again, Bob Chapek was not actually in charge. He was just, you know, ceremoniously the CEO, but Iger was still running the show, and people, employees were still running to Iger to essentially tattle all the time. Uh, shortly after becoming a board member, Chapek decided to uh, strip the creative heads of authority, preventing them from determining spending and distribution for their projects. This essentially served as a demotion for all of them. While Chapek was warned by at least a dozen senior Disney executives that the reorganization was a bad idea. He was given strong backing by the board to move forward with Disney media and entertainment distribution. Reportedly, Iger raised questions, but didn't have standing within the room to make any meaningful changes. So this part is kind of wild. So we'll, we'll read it strictly straight from the New York times article, but just the pettiness of, and I think the passive aggressiveness of Iger is kind of off the charts here. At D23 in 2021, Chapek reportedly pulled out a speaker out of fear of fans would boo him. He claimed it was because of a last-minute commitment. The last-minute commitment was Iger's farewell party. The New York Times implies that Iger didn't want Chapek to host his party, so he instead decided to have it when he knew that Chapek would be unavailable. Ultimately, Chapek went to the party anyway. This sounds like something out of like, oh, like the Housewives shows, like just a bunch of petty drama. Like this is exactly what this sounds like. Uh, in March 2022, the Walt Disney Company released a statement intending to veto the parental rights and education bill. The problem wasn't Chapek's stance. It was that he only spoke up after a poor company response to his statement that corporate statements do very little to change outcomes. After all, Iger had denounced the bill one month before Chapek said anything. To make matters worse for Chapek, uh, Ron DeSantis vehemently opposed the statement from Walt Disney Company, which led to the repeal of the Reedy Creek Improvement Act. So their interpreting of this is basically what had happened in that whole situation was Chapek, and I believe it was also uh, Arnold had said, like, you know, Chapek had, had warned, we're getting too political. We shouldn't be a political organization. That should be something like, you know, something about we should fight wars, not battles sort of thing. So whenever that came out, Iger had then made statements, critic not really criticizing Chapek directly, but basically criticizing the way in which he was handling it, which then forced Chapek to in, internally, they say, pivot too far the other way. So Chapek at the same time was saying we shouldn't get political. Then he felt pressure, then got political, but they felt he went the other way. And then what ultimately led, I think, to the whole battle between Florida and Disney was the statement that was released at that time. And I can't remember the guy's name, but he was the head of the basic the communications and in the, the thing, they, they had a little snippet and it said, we are going to actively work to overturn this legislation, which again is Disney essentially a California company implying that they are going to be working against the interest of Florida that was, you know, by the government of Florida. That's, I think, what got really the biggest ire from Florida was that little snippet of line, which caused the entire battle to spew. So in a way, you could actually blame Bob Iger for starting this, because I think what would have happened is Chapek would have probably decided they were just going to be quiet on this, let it, let it blow through, not say anything. And while they were going to take, you know, they were getting criticized internally by some people at the company, it probably more than likely would have blown over. And then, you know, some people would have still been mad about it. But I don't think you would have the public issue or the public PR stuff that happened. But because of Iger meddling, it kind of forced Chapek to go one way or the other, whether you agree with that or not. And then that forced a reaction on the other side, which caused a whole lot of uh, a cascading effect, if you will, 
from that situation. While Iger never said the board should fire Chapek, Chapek said could feel that things were not going well for him. He is said to have had told Arnold that he was worried things were going to get worse and Iger was going to be more vocal about his dislike for him. As the issues continued to pile up, it was Chapek's former allies, McCarthy and Arnold, who ultimately betrayed him. That's fitting. Without consulting Chapek, McCarthy entered board meetings with numbers and forecasts that showed the direction of the Walt Disney Company. Chapek wasn't present for the meetings where the conversations took place because he was petting hippos at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The figures presented were the final uh, puzzle piece that led to Chapek's firing. As Chapek prepared to go to the Elton John concert being live-streamed on Disney+, Plus, Arnold called him to inform him that he was no longer the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. When asked why he was being fired uh, and wasn't given the opportunity to resign, Arnold told him that the board had lost faith in him. After his firing, Chapek hired Brian Friedman, who advised him he had a very strong claim against Iger, because Iger was interfering with Chapek's ability to do his job. You, yeah, I would say so. It doesn't seem like that Chapek was really able to do his job at all because Iger was constantly there. And then the people that were loyal to Iger were constantly working against him. Again, this seems very Game of Thrones in terms of like, all, you know, all the internal politics. Ultimately, Chapek elected not to seek legal action because his family is a, a quote, Disney family and he didn't want to hurt the company. You know, not that I would cry too many tears for Bob Chapek as he got a nice little settlement out of the deal. He's not going to be hurting for money anytime soon. I mean, when it comes to this article and this information, none of this is surprising. It's it's interesting on some level. Again, it's very Games of Thrones or Real Housewives of Disney World or Disney, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of passive aggressive, you know, chipping and fighting and backstabbing and all these things like that. But I do think it, it does paint a picture of a company that in my opinion has been losing their way for some time and they're not focused on the things they need to be focused on. Obviously, given that when you look at this, Iger, none of these conversations are about, you know, hey, what are the best things that we can do for our customers, our people coming to our theme parks? It's all these internal battles about Iger not liking how Chapek said this, Chapek said this about Iger. None of these people are concerned from, it seems from this article, about things that they should be concerned about about employee satisfaction, about customer satisfaction, about, hey, are, how are the parks doing? How's this doing? Are we making good movies? None of that. It's all just these internal little battles and this passive aggressiveness, which I think is a, again, the things that are happening with Disney now are a symptom of these things happening for a long period of time of not being focused on the things you need to be focused on. And I'm not going to act like that there are other national, you know, Fortune 50 companies or whatever are the most, you know, they're, they're not you know, fairy tale lands and everyone just gets along. I'm not in remotely insinuating that because internal corporate politics are, I'm sure, insane. And again, very much like Game of Thrones. But I have an I have an inkling or a feeling here that the internal dynamics at Disney during this period of time were kind of wild. Uh, and a lot of changes were going on again during COVID, a lot of unprecedented things. And, and the company had drastically changed during this time. Uh, Disney Plus had become a major focal point of the company. Uh, you know, obviously the park's been shut down for a period of time. So there was a lot of turmoil all over the place. And so I think this is just a symptom of people inside of a company losing focus on things they need to be focused on. But I think what it really does lend to is going forward, you know, Bob Iger now is yet again in charge of finding another CEO. And I just have to think if you're one of the two people, which the rumored people up for this job are Josh DiMauro and Dana Walden. With this information in this article and other ones that have been written, you know, since uh, Bob Chapek left, I would read these. I would take some notes. And if it seems like Bob Iger is doing the same things with them that they were doing with Bob Chapek, you might have the, you know, the writing might be on the wall. And I'm sure that some people would make better decisions than Bob Chapek. Chapek seemed like a very unconfident person, very concerned about public image and things like that. Not again, not concerned about doing the job necessarily, but Bob Iger very much didn't want to relinquish control. And I have questions about if he wants to relinquish control now. And in the article, they actually talked about Chapek had said Iger is going to be stay here basically until he dies. And I think that may be the case. Bob Iger does not want to let go of control. He supposedly is walking away in 2026. We'll have to see how if that shapes out. We'll have to see if they hire from internally within the company. But either way, this paints an interesting picture of the internal dynamics of it all. And I think uh, a palace coup is a good way to put it. I think you can put the, the chaos at the Magic Kingdom as well. By the way, it's just an interesting little insight into this. And again, if you want to read the article, it goes into a lot of scenarios here. It's a very long article, but it paints a similar picture here. Uh, kind of what we talked about here. But that is going to be it for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. 
as we do the coverage here of Disney World, Universal Studios, Epic Universe, and pop culture. But let us know in the comments what you think about all of this. And until next time, we will see you in the parks.